Connie Mack is the president and founder of RIA Advisors here in Houston, former college basketball player. And we'll start right there. First of all, welcome to Houston Sports Show, Mr. Mack. And uh, Good morning. at this time, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when you were playing college basketball, did you imagine that at this point you would be a person who's handling other people's money, I guess, at this point? Actually, I, I did envision that. That's one of the keys to how I've been successful is making up my mind early and setting that goal and, you know, working, working on it bit by bit. Uh, so I went to Fordham University on a finance and marketing degree. And during the off season, I would intern on Wall Street. So I knew I wanted to be in the financial industry. Um, the actual, you know, element of finance, I wasn't sure about. Uh, so I was either going to do investment banking. Um, but to your point, I didn't envision being on the retail side of handling people's money. Mm -hmm. I was much more of an introvert, uh, kept to myself. So with retail finance, there is a sales element. Uh, you have to build relationships in order to to gain access to have them trust you, have your clients trust you in managing their money. So that element I didn't envision, nor have my teammates envisioned. They're all surprised that I'm in this yeah. line of work. It's not a common thought of being a Wall Street person or going to Fordham for someone from Lamarck, Texas. <laughs> Where did that world open up and expand for you? Uh, that's an interesting backstory. Uh, at Lamarck High School is very much a football town, Friday Night Lights, etc. Um, I was a football player. So up till my sophomore year, I was a six foot to six foot two defensive lineman. Uh, I got back to school my junior year. I was a six foot six defensive lineman, still weighing 170 pounds. So uh, obviously something had to give. And that's when I started playing basketball. Uh, that transition was a little difficult. You think of a big puppy, just like, you know, you, you know, a big dog trying to get adjusted to its body. That's the way I was my junior year. Where right. I had to learn my coordination, get back to my athleticism. And from there, my high school coach told me flat out, I'm not going to help you guys with a college scholarship. So. Wow. I actually did the recruiting process on my own because my mother was working full time and my dad was handicapped. He had a stroke uh, around that time. So I had to deal with the recruiting process all by myself. So I would go out and actually cold call colleges and have them come watch me play. So there was an interesting story uh, from my experience that I learned from one of my uh, upperclassmen. Uh, he was a Three star, you know, three sports star, six foot four. He could do any sport, but on a foot on the football field, he had a freak accident. Uh, he broke his neck. Luckily, he was able to walk again. But that experience taught me that you need education. So as I was talking to different schools, I started filtering to schools that had a stronger educational element. Are there things that families should be doing and or just people in general should be doing with their 401ks and their family finances in this particular time? Um, it is, you know, important for individuals to reassess how much risk they can take. I, I always talk about the recent conversations I've had with clients, I would say over the last um, four months, right? So you're dealing with peak market, January, February, the discussions were around how much they gained percentage wise. Whereas the last few months, the discussions have been how much they've lost dollar wise. And that's a very critical element for people to understand is that when you talk about risk, you talk about it in dollar terms. It has a lot more of an emotional element to it. And you start to look at, okay, well, I've lost this amount of money. I could have done this with it. I could have bought a car or et cetera, et cetera. So that's a step number one for an individual. And step number two, we're going to see a great buying opportunity at some point. Now, what an advantage an employee has or an individual has that has a 401k plan that they don't have working with me is that they're constantly putting new dollars into their 401k. They can't shut it down, basically. Well, you can't shut it down, but it also, those new dollars can go in and buy in the markets at lower prices. So you're, you're buying the market at a, at a discount 
for those that have a sound financial planning strategy, which is the most critical element, right? So step one, you gotta have your emergency fund. Step two, you gotta have your debt under control. But if you have those two elements, then you should definitely maximize your 401k. And I would say over the next six months, you're gonna have great opportunities with, no, with those new dollars to buy into equity markets that are depressed. And, and I'll ask you finally here, I mean, you are so in tuned into this and have been for quite a while and you play professionally a little bit in uh, different countries. Is this a, a similar, do you get the same uh, energy and feel for this competitiveness that you got in sports as you do in what you guys are doing now? Oh, for sure. I mean, you look at most financial professionals, they get into business that's either a commission business or they start a, a business on their own. Uh, most athletes, to your point, they like the competition, but they also like being in control of their future. They want the input output equation that they've been so accustomed to. Look, if I'm spending time in the gym, I expect my output to be better on the court. Same thing as a self employed individual. The more input I put into my business, the more output I expect for better lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you know, definitely the correlation is there. And I think that we are used to this, you know, beat ourselves up through the week and perform during game time. Most self you know, employed people beat themselves up the first year or two in order to get their business up and running. This isn't the first business that, I, that I've tried my hand at. Uh, as soon as I got done with professional basketball, I tried owning a mortgage company. As a really? in my mid 20s, it was definitely a, a learning curve. Uh, worked very hard. I ate once a day. Uh, I used to sleep on the floor of my office because I worked.